Hi, this is Dan Pastorini, and you're listening to The Grilling Truth. Welcome, everybody, to Week 17 of the CFL Weekly Pick'em Show. I'm your host, Mike Goodpaster. I want to welcome in my co-host, of course, the big loser from last week, Oz Davis. How you doing, Oz? Oh, I'm a big loser. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so used to saying it, but how you doing? <laughs> Oh, things are okay, I suppose, I suppose. All right, I want to welcome in my, one of my other co-hosts, Brian Schmidt. How you doing, Brian? I'm doing good, doing good. And, of course, we'll save the Hall of Famer for last, former Winnipeg Blue Bomber quarterback, Dieter Brock. Good afternoon, everybody. How you doing, Dieter? I'm Dieter, great, it's like at 10 o'clock at night. How you going to say good afternoon? Well, well, it's happening somewhere in the world. Somewhere. That's a good point. All right. Um, we will start off Saskatchewan, 32 to 30 over Ottawa. Um, they had a field goal kicker, which his name is Crap. Is that Crap again? <laughs> Tyler Crap again and connected on six. Crapinha, I think. I think it's probably not how you say it, but it's a whole <laughs> lot of to say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, R. All right. <laughs> Um, this, show, this show took three minutes to already go downhill. Yeah. <laughs> that was a lot less than three minutes, Brian. But, but uh, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, Oz, could they make the playoffs? Or are they eliminated? No, they they became mathematically eliminated. Ironically, they they were mathematically eliminated when Edmonton beat Montreal. So, you know, this was a team that Saskatchewan beat not too long ago in the Eskimos, and yet they were responsible for their elimination from the playoffs. So, no, nah, that's it for the Riders. But here they are. This is the first time they've won more than two games in a row in three years now, since they won the Great Cup. That was the last time they won two games in a row or more. So, good for them, I guess. You know, it's ironic that they're still making trades at this time of year. You know, they're they're playing their best ball. This was the best game they played all year, and it didn't mean anything to them. Yeah, so. and the way, the way they played the last month, though, Brian, I mean, it's conceivable that they're playing better than maybe a team or two that might make the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, at this point, they conceivably could end, end the year as the hottest team in, in the CFL and not even make playoffs. Uh, but, you know, that's good for them, and, you know, hopefully, you know, this is building something for next year. Uh, but they're they're playing well right now. All right. Now, once again, I would like to apologize to Tyler Crapagana, whatever his name is, because <laughs> that's just – I wanted to say it again. I'm sorry. That was juvenile. I can't help it. That's locker room talk. If you listen to the debate, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, Peter, Jeez. the Ottawa Red Blacks. Um where do they go from here? I mean, Trevor Harris gets chased from the game. Henry Burris mm-hmm. comes in, rallies the team from a 15-point fourth-quarter deficit. Um, you think they stay with Harris? You think they go with Burris? Or what do you think they're going to do now? Well, I think what I heard, they were going to go with Burris this week. I think he's going to start. Um, so it'll be – I don't know. I don't know what happened to Harris because I thought he was playing pretty well. Um but, uh, yeah, I think Burris is uh, going to be the starter this week. All right, and now we will go to a game that I'm sure Dieter would like to talk about. The Winnipeg, Winnipeg Blue Bombers held off a B.C. Lions rally, secured a crucial West Division win, 37-35. Um, what was your take on the game, Dieter? Well, it was a great game. I mean, uh, Winnipeg got off to a, a good lead, and B.C. came roaring back. I thought uh, both teams, you know, Played very, very well. And uh, Jennings, you know, threw for over 400 yards. Nichols, again, had a you know, a good game with no turnovers. And uh, it was a great game. I, the one thing that I don't like, and, and, I, and, and I'm glad Winnipeg won, but uh, I don't know if you guys did you see the, the last play when Winnipeg was trying to run the clock, uh, I guess, in the game. And I thought for sure that was a fumble by Andrew. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, Oz giggles. So I think Oz agrees with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You well, it? I mean, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, did you see the? Did you, what did you think there? Did you, did you think that was a fumble or not? 
Yeah, they might have gotten away with one there. Uh, a lot of people are talking about it today online. Um, they might have gotten away with one, but I don't know. Spirit of the game, don't you think? I mean, I, well, I I'm, I'm, I'm not complaining because I, you know, Winnipeg won. Yeah. And I'm glad about that, <laughs> but uh, but I, you know, I, I I don't understand how you can have uh, you know guys looking at it, you know, and and and, and everybody sees yeah. it. The ball yeah. was coming out before he yeah. hit the ground. I mean, it, it was yeah. obvious to me. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we see that in the NFL all the time. Uh, correct, Brian? Basically, all officials suck. Do you agree? Yeah. <laughs> I have not met an official yet that didn't suck. There you go. There you go. So, I mean, I, and I think right now, I think these are the two teams that are vying to be the second best team right now. Um, they play again, be back to back. Um, Mm -hmm. Brian, what's your take? Do you think Winnipeg – I mean, the thing that surprised me is at the start of the year, we were making fun of Winnipeg with Oz's Alouettes, Brian. Yeah. (laughs) It's true we were. Uh, I just just think, you know, Winnipeg is just – you know, they've continued to develop. I think think Nichols as their quarterback has definitely been a difference maker. And, uh, you know, obviously Andrew Harris running the football – but, you know, BC, I mean, you know, Jonathan Jennings, uh, you know, 28 of 38, 422 yards, but, but two interceptions. Uh, you know, again, that, that game with him where, you know, at times he plays really well, at other times, you know, he plays well, but there's always those few mistakes. So, uh, you know, he, he's a guy that, you know, is just right there on the cusp, I think, of being a, you know, an elite quarterback. But, you know, every so often he uh, – just doesn't quite get there, but but still, I think BC is a, a you know pretty good team. I, I think they're going to be a you know a team in the playoffs as well. All right, now you talked about a hot quarterback. We'll go to Mike Riley through for 346 yards and a pair of touchdowns. John White runs for 145 yards, a couple touchdowns. Um, I mean, is, is there really? I mean, I know Calgary is the best team, no doubt, but Brian is Edmonton just flat out the hottest team right now. Yeah, I mean, they're a hot team, but this this has been been the story of the CFL this year is is teams that that get hot and seemingly looking like they're going to be that second best team, and all of a sudden they lose a couple games and, and go backwards. And uh, you know, Edmonton right now is the, is definitely the hottest team. Uh, you know, right now I I feel I mean they're uh, doing it, but I mean. You know, a week from now, you know, they could lose and we're all talking about, you know, you know, here we go again. And it's just been a weird year with every, every time we anoint a number two team, uh, you know, again, like I said, we're, we're kind of like the Force Illustrated Jinx from these teams. So, uh, you know, we'll see what's happening when it gets to the end of the year. All right. Now, I remember somebody on this show bringing up a question I was about four or five weeks ago about whether he thought the Eskimos still had a shot to make the playoffs because yeah. that person did. Um, sure. Oz said, "No way. Their schedule's too tough. They don't win more yep. than a game or two." Oz, you were wrong. I did. Yep, I was wrong. I, was I mean, wrong. a team of a team of Mike Riley, Dieter, is a team that's really dangerous. Oh yeah, Mike's been playing great all year, and um, I mean, they, and he put up forty. They put up forty against a pretty good defense. You know, Montreal's that's the one strong point of Montreal is their defense, and certainly, uh, you know. Mike Riley didn't have much problem with with Montreal, so they're very high. Well, I think I think I mean, they're they're going to be a good team. When when the defense is on the field for sixty five percent of the game, okay, at one point I think halfway through the third quarter they had been on the field for seventy five percent of the game. When that happens, yeah, it's going to be pretty easy to beat them in the fourth quarter. Sure, I mean this defense just tuckered out because the offense can't score sixteen points. That's true. Uh, yeah, but, been, but, I mean. But That's also, been the problem all year with Montreal. Right, but also, exactly. But also, exactly. Um, Oz, I mean, also, yep. and it's somewhat of a defense's fault when you give up 30 carries for almost 200 total yards. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. It's insane. I mean, that I mean, tends I mean, to extend drives also, or extend right. how long I, you're on the field. I mean, I like, I like how the Eskimos from out of nowhere now have this one-two running attack. I like that. 
and the Alouettes have been vulnerable to the run all year as well. I mean, we talk about how they have a great defense. Yeah, but they've also let up the most yards, yards per game running. Now, some of that is a function of being down by 20 points in the first quarter, but, hey, they are relatively weak against the run. And, yeah, I mean, they did let the Eskimos walk all over them in that second half, definitely. Now, how much of that was just about being beat? Hey, hey much real, that... real quick, Oz, are the cops coming to get you for something? <laughs> yeah, that's my that's my ride, guys. I gotta go. Um, <laughs> uh, so you know, I mean, I they, yes, they let the Eskimos walk all over them in the second half. Some of this was a function of fatigue. Some of this was about you know just being the worst team on the field. Well, and then we go to the best team in the league, probably the Calgary Stampeders beat Toronto forty-eight to twenty. Um, Dieter, the thing that stood out to me when I know they scored 48 points, but six sacks on the quarterback, I think that is what makes Calgary the best team because they're the best offense and the best defense. Yeah, that's, that's true, Mike. They, they are the best offense and they do have the best defense. I think Winnipeg's coming on strong defensively, but Calgary, uh, is right now, when you got the best offense and the best defense, that's pretty hard to beat. And, uh, you know, they're, they're going to, they're going to be pretty tough to to beat in the, in the playoffs. Yeah, and Jerome Messam again, Brian, 17 carries, 133 years, kind of the same thing that we were saying about you know, Edmonton. I mean, they have a complete offense. They can run the ball or throw the ball. Yeah, and, and we've been saying that all year, uh, Calgary, just the ability to do whatever is necessary to win a football game, uh, be it run the football, throw the football, have have great balance, uh, defensively make play make plays when they need to, special teams. Uh, you know, again, Calgary is is the New England Patriots of the CFL. Uh, just the ability to win games uh, in any way, shape, or form, but you know, offensively always do a great job of you know, great balance. But even if you take one thing away, they're so good in every other area, you can take the passing game away, and then they're going to run the football. Take the running game away, they're going to throw it. Uh, just that balance is is really what sets them apart from everybody else. Now, my question for Oz, the Toronto Argonauts. I mean, you're, you're <laughs> dealing with bad teams. You're an Alouettes fan. Um, they got Drew Willie. He actually played pretty well, 26-31, didn't throw any picks. I mean, is this team, do they need a lot of help to be a contender next year, or do you think it's just a few pieces here or there? I was hoping to talk about Calgary. I was hoping you were going to give me a Calgary question. Yeah, I figured that, <laughs> because so that's why I asked you. Toronto, that. Yeah, it crossed me up. Yeah. But I'll let I you talk know. about Calgary after you talk about Toronto. T- Toronto is depressing. It's amazing that um, the media, and I hope that the front office doesn't feel the same way, but the media is talking about losing Milanovic. You know, I can't – I mean, mm-hmm. really? Why? Why would you – it's not his fault the team is this bad this year. And the, and the truth is, is that, you know, this year I was always suspicious because they had pinned so much of the, of their hopes this season on Ricky Ray and getting people into that new stadium. Well, guess what? You know, Ricky Ray has been on the bench most of the season and in the hospital and the fans haven't come to the stadium. So I don't understand why this is the coaching staff's fault. And, you know, we, we talked about this before. You know, their new, their new slash old quarterback is not for this year. He's for the future, if he has a future. You know, this season they're playing out the strength. Hopefully next season things will be better. But if they do another front office shakeup, it's not going to be better. All right, I'll you know, they, about They'll Calgary. be right at the bottom with Montreal again next year. What do you want to say about Calgary? What did I want to say about Calgary? What's awesome about Calgary is this. They clinched a playoff spot like two weeks ago. They clinched the number one overall last week, but they're still they're, these games are still meaningful because they're going for the 18-game record. And so it's, really, it's going to be really fun to see this going down the stretch. I mean, they're about the only team that can improve their playoff position this week. But what they can do is continue chasing that record, and I think they want it. I think well, I think I they're going to get it because their schedule includes Montreal twice and Toronto once. They could probably mm-hmm. rest their starting quarterback and mess them. I mean, Mitchell and Messam can wow. take a break for three weeks, and they're going to win all three of those games. Wow. Yeah, but you can't do that. You can't do that. I mean, 
We 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 know this. If you give these guys two weeks off, they're going to be. I didn't real say you rough. could do that. I was just saying that those teams are so bad they could beat them easily. <laughs> I should have just said that to Brian or Dieter. They'd understood me. All right, we'll go to week seventeen picks. <laughs> um, we'll start off with Brian. Ottawa at Hamilton. Oh, this is one of them games that's going to be tough to pick. Um, you know, I'm. I'm I'm uh, I'm definitely going to go with Ottawa. Uh, I I don't know why because every time I go with Ottawa they lose, but you know eventually they got to win, so I'm going to go with Ottawa. All right, Dieter. Yeah, I, you know, um, Kalaris is going to be out. Uh, they're going to they're going to hold him out another week or so, I guess, and um, Mazzoli will start. Uh, and then of course Burris is going to be playing for or starting for Ottawa. This is a tough one to pick. Um, you know, I, I think Ottawa is going to going to win it. I, I'm going to I'm going to go with Ottawa, uh, but it should be a pretty good game, pretty close game. Yeah, I'm going to go with Dieter and Brian. I'm going to go with Ottawa too. Hamilton just whether it's Claris or no Claris, the last few weeks they haven't played well. Shut up, Oz. Oz, what do you got? Ottawa <laughs> or Hamilton? Oh, I'm going to Hamilton. I don't know. I just can't. I just okay. can't pick a winner. All right. You've got I, Hamilton, so okay. me, Dieter, <laughs> go ahead. Yep. No, I was just going to say, um, you know, I, can, I, don't, I can't really see a clear winner in this game. I also can't imagine that these teams would do anything but split this week and next week because they're playing a head-to-head uh, these next two weeks. I can't imagine that that's going to do anything except one and one. So Hamilton's at home. So all things being equal, I'm going Hamilton here. Oh, you are going to take Hamilton. All right. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, next game, Dieter gets to pick it first because it's his Blue Bombers. The Blue Bombers at BC to rematch last week's great game. Mm-hmm. It's tough to, um, you know, to uh, beat the same team twice in a row, and and uh, and also they're playing there in in Vancouver, so uh, it, it's going to be a tough one. But I think Winnipeg uh, is playing. You know, their defense is is still playing very very well. Um, Nichols is protecting the football and, and doing a good job of uh, moving the team. And as well as BC plays at times, I'm still going to go with Winnipeg in this one. All right, Oz. Right. Um, I can't believe that Wally Bono is going to lose to the same team two weeks in a row. i got to go BC. Yeah, I'm going to go with you. I think the teams are fairly evenly matched. So uh, yeah. they got the first one. I think BC gets this one. What do you think, Brian? I agree with you guys. I, I as much as I'm becoming a, a Winnipeg fan, mostly because of Dieter, um, I got to go with BC. I just I don't think uh, well, I don't think Winnipeg can will win this one. But uh, I think it'll be another great game. Uh, I could see it very easily being 37-35 BC. So I think it'll be a great game. All right, next game. I guess I'll do this one to start off. Saskatchewan at Toronto. Number one, who cares? Number two, Saskatchewan. What do you think, Brian? No. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Saskatchewan. And uh, will anybody watch this game? Um, anybody? <laughs> I'll watch this game. I will. See, I was going to watch the game. I'll watch. It. All right. All right. There you go. Peter, you, you going to watch the game? Yeah, I'd, I'll watch it, sure. Dude, you're gonna watch, yeah. We all watch it, Brian. What yeah. do you do on Saturdays? Watch college football, you freaking American? Yeah, well, I'll, 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 probably, I'll, I'll watch it. I, I usually watch it. I don't know if I watch it live, but I'll watch it. But uh, It's going to be rough. Yeah, Brian's one of those, how they get that term, all those ugly Americans. Dieter, Saskatchewan and Toronto, <laughs> did I ask you yet? Oh, yeah, uh, you know, Saskatchewan's hot, you know. What, three in a row? And Toronto is what, lost four in a row? Uh, and it's not just that they've lost four; they've been pretty much manhandled in every one of them. Well, they have, and you know, I'm I'm curious. You know, I I, I really want Drew Willie to do well, but uh, he just, you know, when they <laughs> lost all the receivers and he's going with a new receiving core, and it's just it's just tough. And um, uh, you know, and Saskatchewan is playing pretty pretty well right now, so I'm going to go with Saskatchewan. All right, um, Oz. Well, in answer to the question, who cares? The Saskatchewan fans care, and I mean that 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 counts for something. All God, fans it was a joke. Matter. All right, chill out. All all fans matter. Come on, you hashtag bust that. my ass about something. Oh yeah, I bust your ass. But anyway, 
Uh, yeah, sure, Saskatchewan will win this game, and I also think this game will be worth watching because now we're finally getting to see what a Chris Jones team looks like, at least we think. All righty, so everybody picked that one. Montreal at Calgary. Oz, do you get to be a homer or not? <laughs> Are you kidding? Come on. The point spread on this, let's, let's talk the more interesting question. Of course, Calgary is going to win. The point spread on this game is 15 and a half. I think I'll still take <laughs> Calgary. I'll take Calgary minus the points. All right. I think I will decide to agree with you this time. What do you think, Brian? All right. Yeah, I've got to go with Calgary. I, I don't know if you could ever go against Calgary. Uh, oh. Calgary. All righty. Um, Dieter. Yeah, you can't go against Calgary on this uh, with, with Montreal. So, you know, if it was Winnipeg, maybe, you know, but uh, <laughs> Calgary. <laughs> All right. I kind of like Montreal in this game. Just a gut Yeah, feeling. sure. So I'm going to go with Calgary because my gut's terrible. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with Calgary also. Um, anybody got any final words? I know that's – I got a question. I knew it. There I got you a go. Question. Go ahead. I got a question. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm not suggesting that this is going to happen. I'm not suggesting that you guys, you coaches especially, would ever do this. Okay? But look, the temptation has got to be there for Winnipeg, BC, and Edmonton to start tanking once (laughs) Montreal and Toronto. It's got to be. Doesn't it? Doesn't it have to be there once Montreal and Toronto each lose a game? They're out. Mm. Then it's a fight for that. Final spot in the East, right? D- doesn't somebody want – I mean, Ooh. if you're BC, don't you want to, to, like, go to Hamilton and play a playoff game rather than face Calgary in the playoffs before the Great Cup? I mean, I if you're Edmonton. You I, I, I can stop you there right now because I can tell okay. you this. I really hate to lose. So, uh, um, on yeah. my side, there's no way in hell I'm going to go somewhere and lose on purpose. Brian? Mm-hmm. No, nah, I, I don't think you're going to lose on purpose. Uh, I don't think I, – I, I don't know. So I there's mean, no I don't, temptation <laughs> there or anything? Is there, no... is there temptation? Yeah, I mean, I you know, I've been in situations even recently where, I mean, we were in a situation where if we lost, I mean, it actually put us in a better spot, and, you know, mm-hmm. we still went out and scored 95 points. Um, just Jesus. Yeah, it, It's just hard to – that competitive part of you, it's just hard. It's hard to to do that. So yeah, you know, and and and, and, and even if you go and you rest starters, I mean, you're going to tell your other guys going out there, you know, don't play to win. Uh, yeah, half assed guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's hard to do. All right, Dieter. Yeah. No, I, you know, I think um, you know. Listen, they're all going to go out there to, to you know to, you know to play well and try to win. Uh, you know, if they happen to end up one of the teams. Goes to the to the uh, east. I'm sure they're not going to be, you know, too unhappy about it. But they want to win, you know. I mean, and and they like to get, you know, like I'm sure, like for example, Winnipeg would love to have a home game uh, in the yeah. playoffs. Yes, and yeah, uh, that's for sure. And so, and you know, and I'll tell you what. I mean, I think you know, there, there's a couple teams there. You know, any one of those teams can give Calgary a a, a good game. I mean. And, and could easily win. I mean, it's it won't. It's, it's not going to be a uh, as well as Calgary's playing. It's, it's not going to be a, a breather for them in the playoffs just because. Yeah, it's not like you got to play another... a best of seven series against them. You just got to right, go right. out and Anything play out can your happen mind and... one time. Yeah, I mean, Winnipeg has played Calgary as well as anybody this year. I mean, they've they've had a chance to win both of those games that they've played. So, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. But um, they are, they. All these guys want to go out there and play well and, and, and win. But you've got to right. admit that you, you'd, you'd rather go through Hamilton and Ottawa than Winnipeg. Well, that's the, that's the easy route. Right. Or, you know, that'd be the easier route for one of those <laughs> teams to get to the Grey Cup. But, right. but you know, I, you know if but that happens. Say, if, if you're going to win the Grey Cup, Oz, should, you shouldn't have to worry about who the hell you play. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Because you're going to have to fair play enough. that team eventually anyways to win the Grey Cup. Sure. Yep. Fair enough. Yep. Yep. Totally right. fair. So yep. Oz Makes agrees sense. that we're all right and he is wrong. Yep. So we'll wrap the Come show on. up there. I don't know squat. <laughs> you guys know it all, man. Come I on. just know that a great man once had one of the great you know, quotes I've ever heard. Losing is for losers. 
Uh huh. Yep. Show me a good loser, and I'll show you a loser. I like that one. That was General Patton, I believe. Ooh, nice. I believe. Isn't that right, Brian? I believe. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I haven't looked it up yet. All right, That's guys. Quick we'll, Google. We will. Huh? <laughs> quick, Google it. <laughs> we'll, we'll come back with the answer to start a next week's show. It'll be like our cliffhanger. But, mm. All right, guys. Make sure you check us out next week, week 18. There'll be two weeks left. The playoff picture will be clear. Um, make sure you listen to us on, or check out all of our shows on thegrillingcrew.net, um, including our NFL Pick'em Show, which we'll do later tonight. So if you're listening to the CFL Pick'em Show, you go to thegrillingcrew.net. You can also listen to the NFL Pick'em Show with myself, Brian, um, Mark Cooper, former Denver Bronco offensive lineman in front of John Elway. So make sure you check that show out also. So for Oz Davis, Brian Schmidt, Dieter Brock, I'm Mike Goodpastor. You've been listening to The Grueling Truth where the legends speak.